I already know it's gonna happen again. There's still another game. I know it's gonna happen again. Welcome back to another FNAF review. Haha, <laughs> why are you here? Let me just take a wild guess. You want me to do FNAF 4? That's right. Not completely. Oh, not completely. Oh, He's pretty non in his place. What, what am I even supposed to do for FNAF 4? There's literally no challenges I could do. Maybe do FNAF 4 with no big... Just kidding, you do that every time you play. Wow, good one. You're acting like you also don't play Five Nights at Freddy's. Maybe you should spend Five Nights with some hoes. Okay, can I just do no sound? Does that work? Yeah, that works, but you still cringe. Yeah, and guess what? You're British. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we have finally made it to the fourth game in this series, and somehow I continue to make the worst choices possible, because today, we're gonna be beating Five Nights at Freddy's 4 without any game sounds. Somehow, I've made a stupider challenge than my Five Nights at Freddy's 3 challenge, because we are playing a game that opens up with the phrase, this game relies on sound cues, and we're removing the sound. So the rules for this challenge are very, very simple. We're gonna be beating Five Nights at Freddy's 4, but throughout every single night, my game will be completely muted. Absolutely zero sound, I'm also not allowed to use any audio visualizers to tell if there is sound, and of course, I'm not allowed to have any fun. And to make this video a little bit interesting, and to prove that I actually did something this stupid, there'll be an attempt counter on screen at all times. If you look at the top left of the screen, that's how many attempts I've put into this entire challenge, and trust me, it, it, there's a lot of them. If you want to see me continue this series playing some newer games, or you want me to go back to some of the older games and try out some new challenges, let me know in the comments below. So without further ado, let's get straight into this challenge, but of course, we still have to do a gameplay explanation. Five Nights at Freddy's 4 is pretty much completely different from every other game in this series. The layout of your office, or in this case your bedroom, is a lot like Five Nights at Freddy's 2, except for this time, we do not have any cameras. So to get rid of the four animatronics coming after you, those being Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, and Freddy, we need to listen for some distinct sounds, and when we hear those sounds, we need to slam the door in their stupid faces. There's a lot more stuff that I could talk about, but I'm gonna wait and talk about that when it's actually relevant. So, basically, all you need to know is we play as a child with brain damage. Maybe. And all we do is walk around his bedroom, closing doors, flashing flashlights, and dying. A lot. And that's basically it. Let's go to night one. In this night, Freddy and Foxy are basically completely irrelevant. Foxy is not here at all, and Freddy only has a max AI value of 2. So for those two, we basically don't have to worry about them at all. But for Bonnie and Chica, that's completely different. In this game, Bonnie and Chica actually work very similar to the Bonnie and Chica in Five Nights at Freddy's 1. Every 5 seconds, they'll have what we like to call a movement opportunity. And with each night being around 6 minutes long, that means they're going to have 72 different movement opportunities throughout every single night. But what exactly is a movement opportunity? Again, every 5 seconds there will be a chance for a movement opportunity, and what the game does is it creates a random number between 1 and 20 and compares that to the animatronic's AI value. So taking Bonnie's max AI value in this night, which is 3, the game will create that random number every 5 seconds and compare the number 3 to that number. So with Bonnie's AI value of 3 as our example, if the random number was something like 7, the animatronic is not going to move, but if it's something like 2, the animatronic will move. So that basically just means the lower the AI value, the less chance they have to move. Here's what the map of this location looks like, Bonnie and Chica will start off the night at this top square right here, and they'll move one square with each successful movement opportunity, with Bonnie going down the left hallway and Chica going down the right one. Once they reach the middle position of this hallway, they're actually visible by the player, but you can only see them if you use your flashlight, and once you do, this will scare them off and push them back up to the upper part of the hallway. But, you know, just for example, say, you know, I didn't do that, and they had another successful movement opportunity, they would then be at our door. If we happen to use our flashlight while they're at the door, that'll result in a jump scare, so we're meant to close the door, which will push them back to the upper part of the hallway again. But how do you know that they're at your door, you may be asking? Oh, that's simple. We just have to listen for some breathing. 
Oh yeah, I can't hear anything. So this led to me creating a strategy where I would switch between the left hallway and the right hallway, constantly scaring them off with my flashlight. And if I do this fast enough, they won't actually have enough time to make it to my door, meaning we don't even have to worry about not being able to hear. But, you know, that's for this night. A lot of the information in this video came from Reddit posts, as well as this video made by It's Taken. If you haven't seen this video and you're interested in this kind of stuff, definitely go check that out. And that's basically it for night one. It only took one attempt because literally nothing happened. So here's just me making random noises. Just keep switching back and forth. I don't know when the kids are unhappy. That's the problem. I'm trying to catch them in the hallway. Because if I catch them in the hallway, then... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The, the first, first night, night is never usually that bad in any of the games, so I'll play through. through. Oh, you mother cringe boy. But now I, I can't, I can't, I can't just, can't just. Hey. Boom. Easy. Look at that. We've already completed the first night. Alright, so just before I start night two, I do want to say there is a mini game that you can play called Fun with Plush Trap that you get to play after every single night. If you successfully stop Plush Trap right before he kills you, then you'll get to skip two hours in the next night. But if you die during that attempt, then you don't get to skip the two hours anymore. So just to keep the rules completely fair, I decided to completely ban this mini game at all. So I'm not going to be using it this night or the next night or any other nights in this video. And with that out of the way, we can finally talk about Night 2, and guess what? It's... it's horrible. Literally every single animatronics AI value takes a massive jump, including the pain in the ass I'm talking about this night, Nightmare Foxy. In this game, Foxy moves around exactly like Bonnie and Chica, but instead of being restricted to either the left or right hallway, he can just go wherever he wants. He also borrows the flashlight mechanic from Bonnie and Chica, so if he's in the middle position of either hallway and we use our flashlight, then we'll scare him off, forcing him back to the upper section of the hallway. All those features are the exact same, but the one thing Foxy does differently is he will never go to our door. Instead, he waits at the middle position of each hallway waiting for us to go up to one of the doors. But if we happen to check the opposite door from where he is, so if he's in the left hallway and we check the right door, then he will now be in our room. This is just absolutely ideal. Not only was I born without hearing, but now there's two furries in my room trying to eat me. Once he's made it to our closet, he now acts more like Five Nights at Freddy's 1 Foxy. Now instead of moving around with his movement opportunities, he'll just progress to a different stage. In total, there's four different stages that he could be in. One is where he's a plushie, the second one is where he's standing up, the third one is where he's crouched, and the fourth one is where he's trying to lick us. And again, he progresses through these stages whenever he has successful movement opportunities, and if he stays too long at stage four, then, you know, what happens. Once he's in the closet, there is no way to make him leave, so how are we gonna deal with him? We're gonna slam the door in his face. When you close the door, it'll decrease what stage he's in, and the longer you hold the door closed, the farther he will go back. And that's basically it for Foxy. He doesn't sound that bad, right? He's just an extra step. And that's exactly the problem. He's an extra step. So our previous strategy of just switching back and forth between doors doesn't work because if we get extremely unlucky and choose the wrong door while he's in the middle position, then he's gonna be in our closet and now we have to worry about him as well. So this led to me creating a new strategy. It's called, have future me deal with it. I didn't make a strategy. Here's a bunch of the attempts. By the way, big jump scare warning, so lower your volume if you want to. How the f- Freddy, why do you get so many- <laughs> oh, What? I f closed the door on him, bruh. Never mind. <laughs> Boom. Done. Go back over here. Check the bed. <laughs> do we think we closed the door on this one? <laughs> okay, it's gotta be Chica, right? <laughs> Joe's mama. Oh, Joe's mama. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
Yes! Yes! Let's go! 12 attempts for that stupid... Oh my god. For some reason, literally every single challenge I do in these games, night 3 is always when I get humbled. The first two nights are somewhat easy, and I'm thinking this challenge isn't going to be terrible. Um, it's... it's bad. In this night, we have three animatronics that have an AI value of double digits, and to make matters worse, I still don't have a strategy because my strategy in night 2 was literally nothing. But apart from this night, you know, being absolutely painful, we still have one more animatronic to talk about, and that's of course Nightmare Freddy. As you may have noticed by now, I can go to both doors as well as the closet, but I can also look at my bed behind me. And you may have also noticed that sometimes on my bed, there are small, very violent toddlers on there. That, that sounded weird. Freddy works completely different from every other animatronic here. He has a meter that runs from 0 to 80, and every 4 seconds, he adds his AI value to that meter. So, for example, like you saw in the intro card, Freddy's AI value right now is at 3, meaning every 4 seconds, that counter is gonna go up by 3, and that's gonna continue for the rest of the night. When the meter reaches 10, he's gonna spawn one of those toddlers, which are known as Freddles, on our bed. And this continues to happen when the meter reaches 20 and 30, making a max of 3 Freddles on the bed at one time. These Freddles literally do nothing, all they do is sit on our bed and make this noise. Once those three Freddles have spawned on our bed, we have a bit of downtime on the meter, but after the meter reaches 60 without us doing anything, we're basically like 100% dead. So how exactly are we not gonna die? Because that's kind of important. When you turn around to look at your bed, you can use your flashlight in the same way as using the closet doors on Foxy. Holding our flashlight on the bed decreases our meter pretty fast, so all we have to do is routinely check the bed and use our flashlight. So there we go, now we know how to deal with every single animatronic in this game. So this challenge is gonna be easy, right? Ha, <laughs> uh, no it's not. Mother <laughs> What? Bro. They you coming to kill me? Okay, 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 okay. It's gotta be you, it's gotta be you, it's gotta be you, it's gotta be you, it's gotta be you. If it's not you, then I'm Mark Cuban. It's not him. It's not him. He's not Mark Cuban. He's not Mark Cuban. He's not Mark Cuban. I'm dead. I'm... It was Mark Cuban! You motherfucker! I know it's not Mark Cuban. I know it is. I know it's not. It can't be. It can't be. It can't be him. I know it's not him. He trusts me. He knows me. He's my boy. You wouldn't do that to me. Mark, you f Yes! Yes! Oh my god, it worked! Holy f I hate it! Oh my god, I did it! Let's go, dude! 36 attempts! In total, towards the end of these attempts, I kind of had a strategy going that you can see on screen, but I'm not going to talk about it till we're done yelling at kids. I'm hyped. I'm hyped. Little girl, I don't give a... F did you did you see that? Do you see how big my arms are? Do you see how one is bigger than the other? Don't ask why. That, okay, that, pause. They're tears of joy. Why does Freddy look so... The animatronic characters here do get... Chonk. Why are you T-posed? Why do you got that dopey ass haircut? Why do you look like a bitch? <laughs> Night 4 is where every single animatronic goes completely insane, so now we actually need a strategy. This strategy relies on some really weird quirks with the animatronics AI that I didn't mention previously. To start off this night, we're gonna be using our original strategy that we used way back in Night 1. We're gonna continuously switch between the left and right door, flashing our flashlight to get rid of Bonnie and Chica. But if you remember, this strategy will not work for the entire night because we have to check on Freddy as well. During this night, Freddy has an AI value of 4, meaning every 4 seconds he adds 4 to the meter. 
We have about 56 seconds of downtime where we don't have to check Freddy, which is basically the same amount of time from 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. So to start off this strategy, we're going to continuously switch between doors until it hits 1 a.m. or until Foxy gets into our closet. Once either of these things happen, we're going to start using our new strategy. This strategy involves walking up to the door and closing it two times consecutively and then holding it closed for around 5 seconds. This is to make use of Bonnie and Chica's anti-cheat function. Basically, Bonnie and Chica are programmed to instantly teleport to your door if you close it without them being at their door position. This feature was put into the game to make sure players couldn't just run up to the door and instantly close it if there was no breathing. But instead of this being a really really bad thing for us, it's actually really good. When we run up to the door and do those two consecutive closes, wherever Bonnie and Chica are in the map, this will instantly force them to our door. Knowing this, I'll do the third and final close holding it for around 5 seconds which pushes them back to the upper part of the hallway. So now instead of listening for breathing, I know they're going to be at the door every single time, which means we've basically just gotten rid of the audio feature entirely. The problem is, this strategy is nowhere near perfect. If I mistime it and force them to the door later than I mean to, they're now at the door position waiting to kill us and I don't even know that they're there, so if I don't deal with it after 20 seconds, we're dead. But to further increase our odds and make this strategy even better, we're gonna break the AI a little bit more. Like I just said, if Bonnie and Chica sit at the door position for more than 20 seconds, then they're gonna kill us. But during those 20 seconds, if we turn around to check the bed, we're also gonna die. Knowing this, I would go from the right door to the left door to the bed, so I minimized any chance I had of actually getting jump scared by turning around to the bed. Because, for example, if Bonnie's at his door and we go to check the right door, the bed, and the closet, that is at least 20 seconds of downtime of him being at the door, which means we're dead. All of this combines to create the almost perfect Chicken Ninja no audio strategy. Now it's time to see if it actually works. Oh my god. Bro, the strat. Bro, the strat. Oh my god, Foxy! Oh. What? Bro, why? What the fuck? <laughs> I wasn't expecting that to happen. <laughs> bro. Oh my god. Oh my god, bro. Because if we die, if we if we get caught lacking on the doors, then we die. So never get caught lacking on the doors. See? Never get caught lacking on the doors. Never get caught lacking on the doors. And if you get caught lacking on the doors, you might as well just shit your pants. Like, I'm not gonna lie. If I'm being honest! Get back, get back, get back. Oh! Oh my god, that was close. Oh, baby! Holy f shit! Let's go! <laughs> the strat, bro! The f strat! It works, dude! Let's go! Come on, man! Your boy's a genius! He's a genius! He's a goddamn genius! Let's go, dude! Oh my god, man! <laughs> oh my god! Let's go! <laughs> I do not care about this f kid's PTSD, bro! There we go, we are already on night 5, this is gonna be so easy. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, there, there's more of them. In this night, we get introduced to a new animatronic known as Nightmare Fredbear. He's the only animatronic present in this night, but he is annoying enough that we don't need any more. Nightmare Fred Bear literally has the AI of every single animatronic in this game combined. He starts off the night in the upper hallway and will either go down the left hallway or the right hallway like Bonnie and Chica. The difference here is, instead of having a movement opportunity every 5 seconds like those guys, he has one every 3 seconds. 
Once he reaches the middle position of the hallway, we can now see him with our flashlight. The problem is, we cannot scare him away. If we keep our flashlight on him for too long, he will jump scare us from the middle position. He rarely ever moves up to the actual door position to kill us, and he'll only do that if we fail to close the door for long enough. If we see him at the middle position and close our door fast enough, then it will act the exact same way as if we were to close the door with Bonnie and Chica at the door position. This will teleport him back to the upper section of the opposite hallway. But that's not the bad part. We can easily just see him down the hallway by quickly flashing our flashlight and then closing our door for around 5 seconds. The problem is when he starts to use Freddy's and Foxy's mechanics. Much like Foxy, if he's at the middle position in a hallway and we run to the opposite door, then he will now be in our room. The problem with this is, he doesn't just go into the closet, he can also go onto the bed behind us, and to make it even worse, the only way to know he's doing this is by hearing a sound effect. That sound effect, you know, if we could hear it, would tell us that he's in our room. If he appears on the bed in our room, we can just hold our flashlight on him till he disappears. And if he's in our closet, then we're just gonna shut the closet doors for around 5 seconds. But, what's the problem with that? If you check both doors and he's not there, then he's somewhere in your room, right? Yeah, no. What we do have to do is we have to literally never make a mistake, ever. Because unlike Bonnie and Chica, who wait 20 seconds to kill us, Nightmare Fredbear will only wait 15 seconds. Not to mention that he could also just be a complete nerd and switch positions at the upper part of the hallway so I can never see him. Ah, so what's the strategy here? Nothing. Literally nothing. I have no strategy. Oh, f f no, go back, go back to the f guy! No! Oh. <laughs> what did, what did, what did, what did... I, I was gonna check the closet, bro. Bro, he's fucking with me. How about you give it a little bit? What the f? <laughs> Hola, como estas? What the f is he at, bro? No, I held that shit too long! Why did I hold it? No, what? F where the fuck is he? Where is he? Oh. Yes! Ah, oh, that took way longer than I thought it was gonna take. I thought it was gonna be easy. All right, so this is the point of the video where you're expecting me to make a joke. I think you all know what the joke is, but I'm not gonna make it. Trust me, I won't. I promise. I, I, I'm not gonna do it. Was that the bite of eighty? I'm sorry, I had to, but if you look at that intro card, it probably looked kind of weird. And that's because Night 6 is actually split up into two different parts. Part 1 is from 12 to 4 a.m., and we're dealing with the original 4 animatronics, but this time they're just way more difficult. This part of the night is basically just a beefed up version of Night 4, with Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy's max AI value for that night being their constant AI value for this night, as well as Freddy just being slightly more annoying. During this part, I would use the same no audio strategy that we used in both Night 4 and Night 3, but I did have to change a bit of the original strategy because now I can't switch between the doors with my flashlight at the beginning of the night. The animatronics just move so fast that I could check the left door, but the time it takes me to check the right door and make it back to the left door, I could already get jump scared. And that's basically it for this part of the night. Other than the weird one-off jump scares I would get when the strategy accidentally messed up, this strategy still worked really, really well. But like I said, this night has multiple parts, and once we pass 4am, we made it to part 2, which is of course our friend Nightmare Fredbear. If last night wasn't painful enough, we still have to deal with him in this night, but now he's just way worse. Compared to last night, where his AI value was 12, his AI value is now 15, meaning every 3 seconds he has a 75% chance to move, compared to his last night's percentage of 60. So we literally have to deal with a goddamn cocaine bear for 2 hours of this night, and of course, those 2 hours have to be at the end of the night, so if we just happen to mess up, we have to do the entire night all over again. 
And that's basically it for this night. There's nothing new. No new animatronics, no new strategies. It's just every single animatronic is here and they are all bad. Let's see if that's with the Freddy I knew that was gonna happen. How? Bro, how did they get there so fast? Oh, damn it. Four, five. Bro, why? 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 How fast is Foxy? Oh, fuck. He's fast, bro. What the fuck? Where was he? Why? Why? What the f- Why? I don't understand. My f- God. Go back to the back door. Go to the door! Do <sighs> you think I have time to just- Okay. So now it's four o'clock. Alright, so this is me doing a real quick voiceover just to explain how insane this is. So this was my seventh attempt of this night and my second attempt ever making it to 4 a.m. Somehow, I have no idea how I'm this lucky, but for the entire two hours, he never entered my bedroom once. He was either at the left door or the right door, and that made it super duper easy. Yes! Oh my god, I fucking hate Fredbear. I hate him. He's the bane of my existence, dude. Oh my god. Dude, we got so lucky there. Holy sh**. We got so lucky. He never went into the closet or the door. Or the fucking bedroom. He never came into the room. Ever. Holy sh**. That was so lucky. So yeah, we beat night six. But as many of you know, this game's not over yet. Because we still have to beat Nightmare Mode. That's right, nightmare mode. This night is without a doubt the hardest, worst, stupidest idea I've ever had in any of these games. Now, I know I say that a lot, but this one is truly a very, very bad idea. Just to put into perspective on how stupidly difficult this night is with no audio, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy's AI values are now the exact same as Nightmare Fredbear's AI values from the last night. Freddy's AI value is 6, which doesn't sound that bad, but that's the same AI value as the Freddy in 2020-2020 mode. And of course, we have a new animatronic introduced in this night, which is more difficult to deal with than any other one we've seen. And just to keep piling the sadness onto this child, our infamous no audio strategy, the way it is right now, no longer works. Much like Night 6, Nightmare Mode is split up into two parts. Part 1 is from 12 to 4 a.m. where we have the original animatronics, and from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. we have our new friend. Part 1 of Nightmare Mode literally made me think that the rest of the night was going to be completely impossible. Let me explain. As I mentioned earlier, Freddy's AI value in this night is 6, and if you remember, Freddy has a meter that goes from 1 to 80, and if we pass 60, we're gonna die. And since every 4 seconds his AI value is added to that counter, we only have 40 seconds until we get killed by Freddy. Normally, in a regular playthrough, that's perfectly fine, but if we take footage from last night, and, you know, speed it up a bit because I can't talk for that long, Doing one full rotation of the strategy, checking the closet, both doors, and the bed, takes almost 40 seconds. Meaning if we make any mistakes at all, we're gonna die to Freddy, and obviously that's not gonna work. The first way was no longer checking on Foxy with my flashlight. Whenever I would run up to the closet doors, I would just immediately close them instead of using my flashlight. The second way also deals with Foxy. Instead of decreasing him all the way to stage 1, I would leave him on stage 2 and just hope he didn't kill me. And finally, the third way I would save time is no longer flashing my flashlight to check the halls. Whenever I would do the three door closes, I would just immediately leave after doing the third door close. By doing all of these things combined, we can cut our rotation time down to around 37 seconds. Which is great, that means it's not impossible. 
but that means every single rotation we do, we are between 2-3 to three seconds away from dying. So if any mistake happens throughout the night, yeah, we're dead. Maybe if you're wondering to yourself, hey, why doesn't he just use his flashlight to scare away Foxy? I want you to watch this clip. That, ladies and gentlemen, is why I don't use my flashlight. So now, all we have to do is do this for 4 minutes straight without making any mistakes, and now we're at 4am. And of course, that means we're in part 2, which isn't any better. One more thing I do want to add is I solidified a strategy for the room's layout. After I reset Freddy's counter on the bed, I would then move up to the closet to reset Foxy, then to the right door, then to the left door, and then back to the bed. This was mainly just to stall Bonnie and Chica for as long as possible, because if one of them were at the door positions and I went to the bed, they would instantly kill me instead of waiting the 20 seconds if I weren't at the bed. In part 2, we get introduced to the new animatronic known as Nightmare. From an AI standpoint, Nightmare is very similar to Fredbear, but just imagine Fredbear took enough steroids to kill a giant elephant. Fredbear has a movement opportunity every 3 seconds, while Nightmare has one every 2 seconds. In the last night, Fredbear had a 75% chance to move, and in this night, Nightmare has a 100% chance to move. Once Fredbear reaches his middle position, he'll wait around 15 seconds to kill you, while Nightmare only waits 10. And out of all of those bad things, there is only one redeemable factor about Nightmare, but it actually, like, saved the run. If you remember what I said about Fredbear in Night 5, he'll come into your room if you go to the opposite door from where he is but he'll only do that after he's been at the middle position for more than 10 seconds. But like I said previously, Nightmare will kill us after 10 seconds, meaning he can never enter our room if we go to the opposite door. Does this mean he can't enter our room? No, but you know, it, it helps a little bit. He can teleport into our room, but that's based on RNG. So if we get good enough RNG, he will never enter our room and he'll always be at one of the doors. So we're just gonna assume that he never enters our room, since there's no visual ways to know that he's teleported into our room. So the plan is very, very simple. During part 1, we need to perfectly execute the new no audio strategy and make sure we don't mess up. And after we do that, we'll enter into part 2, where we need to get perfect RNG so that he doesn't teleport into our room, and we also need to get perfect RNG on guessing which door he's at. Wait, that sounds like really hard. Three, four, five. Back to the door. Dang it! Oh my god, I might not have enough time. Two pounds of cream cheese in one sitting. I'm gonna die. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Oh my god, bro. I literally can't get anything wrong. Me. Okay, check the bed. Hmm. Damn it, bro. What? Bro. Ah, I f hate it. It's so annoying. How much do we trust Bonnie? No. <gasps> we are out of order completely. Wow. What? I pulled it for seven. Ah, ah! Dude, why? No, man, I got so close. Oh, bro, they're so fast. I just went to the closet once and then they were already there. What the fuck? Alright, so this is me doing a quick voiceover. As you can see, I checked that door and he wasn't there, meaning I guessed completely incorrectly. 
And usually that would mean that I'm dead, but sometimes I get lucky and I have enough time to make it to the other door to instantly close it. I know I don't have enough time to check if he's there with my flashlight, so if he's not there then I'm basically just dead. But it's basically just one last Hail Mary to make sure that I don't die. Yes! Yes! Oh my god! Ah, oh, dude, I got- I clutched that up. I clutched that up. Did you f see? I went over the- uh, I went over to the door, and he wasn't there, and I f clutched it. Oh my god! Yes! <laughs> I'm f done, dude. I'm done. I'm done with this goddamn game. Oh my god! Yes, bro! <laughs> Let's go, dude. <laughs> oh my god! Ah, uh, finally! Ladies and gentlemen, we have officially beaten Five Nights at Freddy's 4 without any game audio ever. This is by far one of the hardest challenges I've done in one of these games, but it was definitely one of the funnest. I really got to mess with the game's AI and force my way through no audio, which made it really, really fun. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Well, you know, I kinda. In total, this challenge took over 100 attempts. I don't know the final number because I probably forgot to add some, but we're just gonna say over 100. If you've missed any of my previous videos, I've beaten the first two games without lights and I beat the third game without maintenance, you can check those videos out using the link in the description or you can go to the playlist on screen right now. Thank you all so much for the support on the channel recently. I don't even know how this is happening, but I'm here to make good content and hopefully I'm doing that. So as always, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and consider subscribing and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.